Righty. So we've got um, a. Uh, what we've done is we modified the circuit to put a constant current uh, circuit in here. There's two diodes in that, and it's only 10 ohms. But this one's uh, as opposed to the original circuit, yeah, which just had a resistor in there. All right, down here somewhere. There it is. Yeah. See, we just had a. That was a 220 ohm resistor. And now we've gone for a current source. There it is. You see this this arrangement here is a current source. I've got 10k here, so as to give it a power through that. It's on this one actually. This is the correct one. So we've got three dows there, which actually give us uh, about 1. Uh, 1.4 volts, I think it is. Uh, one in four and four eights. And the third. It's, that's actually three resistors in series. One, two, three. And then we've got the three diodes. Yeah, one, two. Oh, it's actually two diodes. Okay, fine. Let's just delete that from the circuit so we know what's going on. There we go. And that means it's correct. Okay. Right. So about one point. So I think it's actually one point two volts here. Okay. And then you got your point seven drop across it, so you end up with. And I've measured it. Uh, across the resistors. In fact, let's just do it. Mm. So what we've got? Let's show it. Let's push that further back, and then we can get this on. There we go. And you can't see it. There we go. Okay. And so what we've got? This is going to be easy. <laughs> yeah. So we've got the positive and the transistor. Okay, and we can see there. You just out of shot, but basically that's uh, fifty millivolts. Yeah. Right, that's an average voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter it to give it. The full voltage across it, so it's a stand static voltage, and then we can see what the voltage actually is across the resistors. And now you can see that it's showing five five hundred and seventy four five hundred and seventy five um, millivolts. Okay, that's going across that. And if I measure across the transistor itself, collector emitter, you can see it's showing 11.3, I know it's slightly out of shot, but it's 11.39, 11.4 volts, okay? That's going across that, okay? And so, just to complete the picture, let's have the uh, um, the base voltage, okay? And you can see the base voltage there is 1 1.2, 1 1.225, it's showing on there, okay? Right, so those are the voltages. Base voltage is one point. That's interesting. Oh yeah, one point two volts. You see, and then you can see if you actually measure it across it, it's actually point six volts. So the base emitter junction is at point six volts. Yeah, which is of course what's the uh, what the uh, yeah yeah, and that's what the uh, voltage across there. That's well, it's point six one six now. Okay, so you've got 0.6 volts, and you've got 1, 2, 3 resistors, 10 ohms each, so that's 30 ohms, and then you've got the two diodes, 1, 2, and you measure the, we measure the voltage a lot. This is a 10k just simply to supply power to the base, or sync it in this case, because it's a PMP. Okay. <coughs> right, and so there we go. Right, now the, that I put 0.5 volts in there, and it's a 30 ohm resistor, so the actual current going through there is... Yeah, about 17 milliamps and then oh, the power rating is 8.3 milliwatts which is well within the uh, resistor spec I mean you know that's well within the resistor spec and the transistor because you got you've obviously got your 16 17 millivolts going through it right and it's at 11.3 I put in here I think we measured it something slightly different but doesn't matter uh, is 189 milliwatts going through that Okay, through the collector emitter junction, you're going to have obviously some going through the uh, collect, uh, the emitter base junction as well, 
and we know what that is because that's uh, that times that isn't it <laughs> uh, 0.67 times the uh, voltage across it 16 milliamps across uh, 700 millivolts it's not going to be much at all so you, you're talking 200 milliwatts <coughs> excuse me but this beastie is actually getting quite hot I'm going to put my finger on it It's I'm thinking in the region of 60 to 70 right degrees now I brought up the spec sheet of a BC557 which I've now closed uh, there we go yep and in there it says the junction temperature can go up to uh, 150 degrees C. Okay, so it is within spec. It's not going to it's not going to blow the thing, but um, it's obviously getting a bit on the warm side. Now that's fine because the way we've got it at the moment, we are directly driving uh, the gate using the current source and sinking through a transistor. So this transistor here is obviously switching full on at the moment. And so we're basically getting the supply voltage going across there. Now, when we actually do this properly, uh, we will end up with, uh, uh, we're gonna be driving, this This is not gonna be directly connected to the gate. We'll have a current amplifier in there, a meter follower pair, maybe even two stages. Right, so we won't need this here. We'll probably have like a hundred ohms or something, and the current going down there will be will be quite small, even compared to this. We're talking probably in the region of um, you know, certainly below one milliamp, more like a you know, more like a few hundred microamps in that sort of range. Yeah, which means that the power there will drop by an order of magnitude. So we'll probably be talking about about you know, in the region of ten milliwatts. 10 to 20 milliwatts which means it won't even get warm it'll be pretty cold yeah so I'm happy with that uh, the problem is is that this is a um, uh, BC557 a limit of uh, collector base no we're talking about the yeah collector base is 50 volts max and collector emitter is 45 volts max right okay so this can only actually operate up to 45 volts now we've got 12 volts here but when we're split rail supply this guy is going to be minus uh, 24 volts if we're going to be using it in the uh, green power challenge thing so this guy here will be at minus 24 volts which means we'll have 36 volts across the rails which is okay but if I was to actually use it like in a Prius where this is actually minus 300 volts then not a chance in the world. Do you know what I mean? That's going to be fried, so we need something else. But for the purposes of low voltage in this one, that's fine. And it works. I'll just show you. There you go. Let's see it's turning it. Right. And what what is I think a bit of a surprise is that it actually doesn't really improve the switching time, the on switching time. I thought it would, but then the uh, the timing. Let me have a look. So if I can go up more, let's go bring it in again. I'm looking at the on time. There we go. Turn the light over and make it a bit better. Yeah. So interrupted there by a phone call. So uh, what we've got there is let's just push this out of the way a little so it makes it easier. <coughs> yeah. So here the scale is. Let's push that there, and we can see it better. No, we can't. <laughs> Let me just. It's a bit light that way instead. Okay. So the scale here is um, five microseconds per division, and that's spanning oh, two-ish. Yeah. So that's ten, I would say. 10 microseconds, which was pretty much the same as when we had the um, 220 ohm resistor. It's probably because it's passing the same current. I mean, yeah, fair enough, whatever, you know. But the whole point of doing it this way was that we had a better load. I mean, this thing is now, well, well it's gone cold, right? Whereas before, uh, no, actually it wasn't warm, was it? No, because we weren't passing it because it switched off full on. So that's being switched by digital switching. It's this one that's going to be in the, uh, yeah. And I mean, that's cold now, you know. Um, but it is better because 
um, of the voltage going across there and the fact that we've got a constant current circuit means that we can control that better and certainly when we actually do have a um, uh, current amplifier in here then this then would probably react faster I don't know maybe I don't know does it give us an advantage it doesn't seem to so maybe I won't bother who knows shut up right and then the switch on times are obviously pretty good because it is, you know. I mean, uh, let's try switching the trigger. Let's go to the on time. There we go. So the on time. Is that that's five microseconds per division? Yeah. I go for a smaller. Go for two and one if I can get it in. hard to get in this shot <laughs> I think well that's it yeah there you go and it's one so the switch off time is one microsecond which is fine because we've got one microsecond per division and it's obviously within a division so the switch off times is still good and it's quite smooth it's straight down there's the kink where it's uh, whatever there's the kink where it's uh, you know where the um, the gate charge changes yeah so it's working uh, that I genuinely I think that that's probably better because that can handle up to 150 degrees whereas the resistors I don't think they can but I don't know is it better I don't know yeah that's the bottom line um, one thing that is easier to deal with though is if you have a constant current circuit like this I think so long as you can um, yeah, but the thing is you've got the problem with the voltage again haven't you if you're doing 300 volts plus your 15 plus your 12 volts on the high side that's 315 volts and you're passing 315 volts across that uh, transistor yeah and obviously there's current going through it your current is going to be you know you obviously won't be able to switch um i don't know anyway oh well whatever so we've done it we've, we've put a constant current circuit in there it does seem to work i would say uh, it holds the voltage across the resistor, which means it's probably working okay, and uh, it's giving us um, what we're asking for, really, which is the, uh, the constant current. No, I think that's it. Anyway, what's your uncle? There we go. Uh, how does it scale up to the um, the uh, cost of the model itself? You see, in the model, you can see that uh, it's. Um, yeah, let's have a look. So we got five microseconds per vertical line, right? And so the switch on time in this one is showing it working in one microsecond, except for it isn't. It's in ten. So and that's with, a, but I think that was simulated with a ten ohm resistor, possibly when it was that circuit. Yeah, it's a ten ohm resistor. So we actually have more current flowing down there you see and I originally did it with 20 ohms and it seemed to get quite hot so I put an extra resistor in there an extra 10 ohm to make it 30 ohms I also put an extra diode in there to give it more voltage I don't know why I did that though that, that was probably a bit silly yeah. but it's you know it's 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 making it work yeah and what I might do is experiment with the model to see how we can reduce the current see what the current actually is passing through there as well